and welcome to a, another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm doing a, another Doctor Who video, surprisingly enough. Uh, um, I'm doing a video on three um, three enemies I want to see come back in Series 11 of Doctor Who. Now, I know what you're thinking, oh, don't just bring back all the same old tropes, da 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 and so on and so forth, and all that. But, I don't know, I mean, I know so many people on YouTube seem to be like, oh, Doctor Who needs to be fresh and new and da-da-da and this and that, and, well, the thing is, wasn't Series 10 quite fresh and new, and yet, it still had some old stuff there too, and people didn't mind. If anything, people got more excited for that stuff than some of the new stuff, sometimes, in some respects anyway, or at least I know I did. But the thing is, in retrospect, looking back in Series 10, I can see why that is because they didn't just bombard you with the new, the old stuff immediately like in series 9. Think about it, Davros and the Daleks were immediately in the first two part of it. Whereas with this, with the series just gone by, you know, you've got the Master, oh and the Master was in that two part as well, so you know, so you got Master, Daleks and Davros all in one episode, which if you told me when I was like nine years old, when I was like seven or eight years old when I'd first watched the Doctor Who, I started, oh, when I just figured out about the Daleks, Davros and the Master, so sort of going into series five, that one day there'd be an episode with all those characters in, my mind would have been blown away, but yeah, it was still not that good an episode, unfortunately, but I'm not here to talk about that. Um, shit, now I've forgotten what I was saying. Um, I think the thing is, um, I think having old stuff is good for the people who obviously are diehard fans of the thing, but you need to still push forward and take it in consideration that there will be new viewers, and especially with the 13th Doctor being female, I think there'll be a lot more incentive, if anything, for more female viewers. Not that I'm saying that there isn't already, there is a lot. I see, I'd say about 50-50 personally, I'd say. Um, at least on YouTube anyway, I seem to see quite a lot of reaction video-y things by female uh, Doctor Who fans and then the more obsessive <laughs> uh, fans um, uh, it just so happen to be guys. Not that all of them are just guys, but you know, th they seem to be the more obviously vocal obsessive fans clearly. But, um, but what was I going to say? Oh, um, but yeah, so I think, you know, having these old um, monsters is good for this one reason, because to them, they're new. Think about it. The Master was new to me. The Dalek, w the Daleks were new to me in the revived series. As was the, you know, the Sidemen, the Master, the uh, Sontarans, you know, the Ice Warriors, you know, all of this stuff was new to me. Yeah, by Ice Warriors, I sort of got into classic here about Series 3 of Doctor Who, but that's not the point, so bringing back old stuff, old enemies isn't a bad thing. I think you have to do it sparingly and or do it uh, sparingly but also space it out as well throughout the series. So, because for example when you think about it, you don't get a classic monster in series 10 until episode 8, I think, I want to say. Uh, six. No, episode 9 actually. It's episodes 9 and 10 and 11 that have all of the classic series -y stuff. It's the first 8 episodes uh, totally... No, eh? Episode 6, 7 and 8 were the Monk 3 part of... And then episodes 6, 7 and 8... Yeah, yeah, episode 9 was the Ice Warrior one. So, and then with episode 11 and... Uh, 10 and 11... Um, or 11 and 12, should I say, yeah, were Cybermen, or Mondasian Cybermen, and then two Masters, so, um, but yeah, so, for me, I've picked three, obviously, enemies, and I've picked one from each era, for lack of a better term, what do I mean by that? I mean, classic series, Russell T. Davis series, and then Steve Moffat series, so to speak, um, so, yeah. From the classic series, I would say the Sea Devils, I really want them to come back, but now the only problem I have with that is the, the fact that, um, much like the say the Silurians, I don't want them to do an update to the point where they're not even, you can't even really recognise them as the same uh, sort of 
creature and or monster and or person that or creature that they were before and that and I think it would be interesting to see an episode maybe with the sea devils in the new series just because we haven't seen them yet before and we've seen the Silurians come uh, back from the classic series and they were they're very much closely linked um, and that creatures we've seen the ice warriors come back and I was you know they're all sort of reptilian -y sort of creatures and that so I even associate the ice warriors and the sea devils and the Silurians um, even though I know most of you will be like, what? This is heresy! <laughs> Burn the non-believer and all that. But um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I, I really like the Sea Devils and, um, you know, I'm surprised they're only in, to me, the one episode. I don't want to class Warriors of the Deep as a, as a Sea Devil episode um, or even a Silurian episode or even an episode in general. But, um, but yeah, so... I think they're well overdue a return, and I think, you know, I think the only problem is that their story potential is limited because of the way that they are as creatures, but it would be interesting to see how the 13th Doctor would interact with them, and it would be interesting to see, it would be very interesting to me anyway, uh, if, you know how most people have the this, this, this sort of, for lack of a better term, stereotype, but it's scientifically proven, to be fair, that women are more empathetic, but it would be very interesting. Highly unlikely that the BBC would do this, but in my head that they do a story where there's the sea devils, but um, the 13th Doctor is actually less empathetic and unempathetic and darker than, say, the 3rd Doctor, who tried to be diplomatic about this, but actually she's actually more sort of Ninth Doctor-esque and kind of like, no, actually, this is war, and that, that would be very interesting, personally, because I know there's obviously, it's scientifically proven and biologically speaking, it is a well-known fact that, you know, women are more empathetic than men, and, you know, and more in tuned and more can, you know, sort of emotionally connect and engage more with others around them. And so for that, that for that to be a thing, that would be very interesting because it would flip the whole gender thing upside down because it would be, yeah, like just sort of proving that to, to young boys maybe watching that actually, you know, John Pertwee's Doctor was actually the empathetic one and the emotionally not stable one, but emotionally able to connect with other creatures, whereas actually this Doctor isn't, uh, and that. But it would just, yeah, it would just flip that on its on its head, maybe, so to speak. But, um, I don't know. Maybe it could be an idea, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the Sea Devils from the classic series, Russell T. Davis era, obviously, for me, if you've been subscribed to me for some time and or... Uh, and whatnot, you should hopefully know this one by now, but the Sycorax, I adore the Sycorax, I had them in the, the last episode and or story that I did for my action figure adventures, uh, Judgment Day, loved them in the 12th Doctor Ghost Story thing, um, 12th Doctor Ghost Story miniseries, you know, bring them back, <laughs> please bring them back, I love them, they're so cool, they're just, you know, these ancient sort of, there's, the, I just feel like there's so much untapped potential there, you know, there's, there's the, aesthetically they look cool, they, they have, they, they don't look like they'd be that expensive to actually have on the show, so, you know, if there's a budget thing and constraints, yeah, bring them there, you know, um, but less is more, they've, they've got all these bones and, and that, and it'd be very interesting to see their sort of, mythology and, and that is very witchcrafty and the swords and the staffs and the you know it, it's just be interesting to see the lore and culture uh, of these creatures personally um because again the the although the aliens their 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 mythology and lore seems to be very sort of for lack of a better word backwards but also prehistoric in our terms anyway you know and that so that would be very interesting to see um, in at number one uh, would be, surprise, surprise, the Weeping Angels. I think it's such a shame we never saw a Weeping Angel story with P. 
Peter Capaldi's Doctor, he would have worked superb uh, superbly with them. Um, and I and I mean, at this point, though, the only thing that I don't, I'm not 100% sure on is the fact that whether or not we could have a Weeping Angel story because of obviously legal reasons, because of the fact that, you know, Stephen Moffat sort of created them. So does he have the rights to them, like the whole Terry Nation Act thing? Or is he fine with just being like, you know what, Chris Chibnall, insert writer here, you know, Toby Whithouse, Margus, whomever, you know, or Sarah Dollard, you know, you're alright to write uh, a, um, a Weeping Angel story and that, because that would be very interesting to see one, uh, not only them come back, but to see that a new writer and a different writer from Stephen Moffat, uh, Stephen Moffat write them, and also to see how the new Doctor would face them, and, I mean, we've had a whole doctor's worth of No Weeping Angels, so, and I mean, less is more with them, and I think, yeah, I think they have been, we are ever so slightly oversaturated with them in the sense that, you know, Angels Ma uh, Take Manhattan, yeah, that was shit, Weeping Angel story, and then, you know, and then you've got the whole Time of the Doctor thing, them just popping out of the snow, you know, and again in Hell Ben, I forgot about that one, of course, you know, you've got them there, in the carnival scene of, of the, the cloister riffs and the cloister bells and whatever the fuck that was. Uh, and that, that crap where, you know, they're just literally there to just go around a corner and be a jump scare. And it's like, no, these are, these are supposed to be taken serious. Like, seriously, they, they, Stephen Moffat and the Doctor Who team have somehow done what they've done with the Daleks, but like that, instead of, at least with the Daleks, it slowly deteriorated for, for me, and most fans hopefully will agree that that was a slow incline into death and, and the abyss that is, you know, where the Daleks are now. Um, you know, the Whipping Angels were really good in Blink, really good in, or fairly good in the next one, and then just went down. But we've had them, like, instead, with, at least with the Daleks, we've had them for, like, year long, like, this long of a time period, whereas with the Weeping Angels, in contrast, we've had them for literally this long, and already they've kind of just gone, yeah, and, and that. But, again, Weeping Angels, because, again, I think it would be very interesting to see, sort of, maybe, um... Although this Doctor will have to be strong and, and independent and all that because of her external, you know, gender and that, you know, I think, um, it, for lack of a better term, and dare I say this, I think that it would be, in Series 11, very interesting to see um, that Doctor be vulnerable uh, and that and deal with that, but also be, yeah, frightened and whatnot of these weeping angels and that and reference maybe some Matt Smith stories and or David Tennant stories of Blink and the Weeping Angels and this and that, and again it would be very interesting to see a new writer uh, write for the Weeping Angels. So yeah, thanks for watching, comment, rate and subscribe.